Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Dr. Kyril. Um, my name is Dr. Aisha Binti Mahadi. I am from group Anfis Kuri along with my group mates Hafiza Anissa, uh, Muhammad Afif and Muhammad Ali Irfan. Today we will be presenting on the power of the judiciary to check and balance the power of the executive and legislature. So firstly, before we really answer the question given to us, we would like to just give a brief overview on what exactly is doctrine of separation of powers. And um, a definition by Baron de Montesquieu, a French political philosopher uh, who was famous for his view on this theory of separation of powers, he believed that separation of powers lay out the governmental structure and protect political liberty. And he also quotes that the strongest defense against tyranny is the division of powers among the several branches of government in order to ensure the unity and harmony of the state. And each of these powers must be exercised by a different organ and a system of check and balances should be put in place. Um, and at the same time, before we also um, understand what exactly this doctrine is, we also have to understand the concept of constitutionalism because um, this doctrine is actually one of the elements that built up to uh, the concept of, of constitu constitutionalism. So basically, constitutionalism is like the bigger picture and the doctrine is one of the elements that comes under it. And what constitutionalism is, is uh, imposing a restraint or limitation on the governing body and its organs like the legislative, the executive and the judiciary. But this doctrine of separation of power uh, focuses more on organizing the power given to the political authority to prevent abuse of power and oppression towards one party or the other. So uh, looking into uh, the purpose uh, of doctrine of separation of powers is that firstly uh, it is meant to avoid conflict, uh, secondly to prevent overlapping of interests and third to deter misuse of authority by government entities and each government entities access to power is constrained by the idea of this doctrine uh, which then forbids them from interfering with the authority of other entities so uh, basically it's to say that each of these um, governing authority has their own powers and authorities and they cannot uh, do other entities work so looking into a smaller scale which is malaysia in specific malaysia does practice constitutionalism so that means that this doctrine of separ separation of powers is embedded in our uh, constitution and the father constitution provides a framework for the government's direction administration and development of the nation um, and like I have mentioned before, each body of government has specific functions. And because of this doctrine, uh, not, no, uh, no, no body has more power over the other. And if you were to look at the functions of each of these bodies, uh, the legislature is known as the lawmaking body. The executive governs the nation and its states by administering, carrying, um, and enforcing the laws established by the legislative body. And thirdly, we also have the judiciary, which applies these laws in court. Um, and in this presentation today, we will be discussing certain cases that has been um, decided by the courts uh, in matters to, to the doctrine of separation of powers and also constitutionalism. So um, it is important to note that whenever there is the doctrine of separation of powers, there is also uh, a check and balance being put in place. And this is to ensure that the doctrine of separation of powers is constantly practiced within all the bodies of government. And um, for the purpose of this presentation, we will be focusing solely on how the judiciary check and balance the power of the legislature and the executive. Um, and as we know, um, the judiciary acts independently so they it, it also means that they are responsible to carry out this duty as it is embodied in their legal framework and although the power of the judiciary is not explicit explicitly defined in the federal constitution um, however the legal term judicial power has been mentioned in article 121 of the federal constitution and basically what judicial power is is it, it is that uh, it allows the judiciary to exercise its powers of check and balance uh, of the executive and the legislature through um, Judicial review.
So today I will be explaining what is judicial review. So judicial review is the process through which the courts exercise their supervisory competence to ensure that the public authorities do not exceed their authority. The judicial mechanism accessible to an aggrieved individual to question the legitimacy of public authorities' decision-making processes. The court review was primarily concerned with the legality of the executive decision-making process and not the decision's merit. So now, according to Halsbury Laws of Malaysia, said that judicial review is the process by which the High Court exercises its supervisory jurisdiction over the proceedings and decisions of inferior courts, tribunals, and other bodies of person who perform quasi-judicial function or are charged with the performance of public acts and duties. Prior to 1996, Malaysian courts adhered to rigorous and specialized common law standards governing judicial scrutiny of administrative functions. So the Court of Appeals landmark decision in the case of Tan Tak Seng v. Rohan Jaya Perkhidmatan Pendidikan and Anum in 1996 has shifted the legal practice from appealing to common law norms on the basis of judicial review to the federal constitution. So recent Malaysian jurisprudence demonstrate that the courts are robust, imaginative, and adaptable enough in judicial review by loosely and generously construing the federal constitution's fundamental right provisions. While parliament remains the primary legislator, it can also delegate legislative authority to other administrative bodies, agencies, and also authorities. The expansions of delegated or subordinate legislation in the form of rules, by laws, regulation, or any other instrument demonstrates that government is growing participation in administration. For the next part, I will compare and contrast the judicial review in Malaysia and the United Kingdom. So as mentioned, judicial review is a procedure that grants the court the authority to exercise its supervisory jurisdiction. This is to ensure that public officials do not operate outside of their delegated authority. As said, judicial review falls under the competence of the court for controlling the power of public bodies. The purpose of judicial review is to grant the court jurisdiction to determine whether or not the law is being followed. It empowers the High Court to exercise supervisory jurisdiction over the proceedings and decisions of lesser court, tribunal and other entities as mentioned from the last part of the video. So for judicial review, uh, in the UK, the basic procedure is when a public authority or public body makes a judgment that is contrary to the law, the claimant can obtain legal counsel, meaning that the lawyer should explain in detail on why the accusation made by the public authority is incorrect. So first, there is the authorization stage during which the court determines whether or not the matter requires a full hearing. This is because time is of the essence. It is crucial that the claim must be lodged as soon as possible. Um, following that, then the party will be heard by the court in full hearing. So under English law, the judicial review must be filed on time or in any case within three months after the judgment or complaint. For the next part, I will compare and contrast the judicial review in Malaysia and the United Kingdom. So as mentioned, judicial review is a... So in general, the judicial review method in Malaysia is nearly identical to that in the United Kingdom. This is because Malaysian law is based on the English law itself. So the procedure of judicial review in Malaysia will be explained by my other groupmates on the next slide. Moving on, I'll be explaining the differences on grounds applicable in Malaysia and the UK. So, in Malaysia, public authorities are controlled by the Rules of High Court 2012, which governs the public authorities' actions to ensure that they do not exceed their authority. This is when judicial review could be applied. When judicial review is granted and favorable by the court, the court will reward the plaintiff with remedies and also damages. So any individual who is unsatisfied with the administrative decision may seek judicial review on the grounds of invalidity.
So for United Kingdom, the grounds for judicial review are properly considered. There are two types of claimants who can seek judicial review, those who allege a breach of statutory agreements, and the second one, those who believe that the decision was made in an unreasonable way and violates the concept of natural justice. The House of Lords, in the case of Council of Service Unions versus Minister of State for Civil Service, has cited three specific reasons for judicial review, which are illegality, irrationality, and also procedural irregularity. So, illegality happens when a person acts ultra vires or outside of his or her power granted. So, all in all, the administrative bodies are given the authority over their specialized areas. Therefore, they are required to exercise their power cautiously as the decision made must be. So for United Kingdom, the grounds for judicial review are properly considered. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mama Afiq and I will be explaining the exercise of judicial power in Malaysia. So to begin with, before discussing judicial power in depth, it must be emphasized on the importance of understanding the rightful process and grounds to apply for judicial review. So the primary question remains, which is the question of locus standard of the applicants to apply. Locus standard in this context generally means those who have been adversely affected by a decision made by a court, regardless of whether the, that decision had personally affected the applicant, as the law recognizes public interest litigation, which the primary thing is to address social concern. So the relevant case that can be used is the case of Government of Malaysia against Lim Kit Siam 1988, whereby the court specifically defines the term local standard as someone who has the rights to be heard in the legal proceeding, but subject to certain conditions, especially whether the applicant has a sufficient interest in that particular matter. This is to avoid floodgates of application being received from the members of the society. Furthermore, after discussing who has the local standard, the relevant thing to be discussed after is the procedures itself which can be seen under Order 53 of the Rules of Court 2012. There are two primary stages to be discussed which the first one is the applicant must file an application for leave under Order 53 Rule 1 and Rule 3 of the Rules of Court 2012. This is immensely important as during that stage, the court will decide whether that person has a local standard, whether the said case is establish a prima facie case of reasonable suspicion, whether the claimant's conduct is competent, for instance, the time limit provided under Order 53, Rule 3, Subsection 6, and whether they have explored any other legal revenues or alternative remedies to that particular issue. So, the relevant case to be discussed is the case of Tabu Realty Sedan Berhad against Ketua Pengarah Hasil Dalam Negeri 2004 whereby the High Court says that by providing substantial evidence and relevant arguments of law, that can be seen in the eyes of court as a strong case for it to go beyond further investigation. In addition, the court said that the case must prove a prima facie case to distinguish the relevant application being applied, as opposed to applications that are pointless. So following the application for leave were to be granted, the parties would move to the second stage being called as the substantive stage, where there will be hearing and final verdict would be given. And now I will explain on judicial power. So as mentioned by Air Friend, judicial power uh, that must be exercised by the judiciary is through judicial review. So through judicial review, the court may rule a parliamentary act unlawful. It can also have control over subsidiary laws that may be uh, exercised. It implies that any subsidiary legislation that is inconsistent with a state statute or a federal statute uh, will be declared law and void by the court. In light of this, the function of judicial review is essential for effective governance in Malaysia. The application of this doctrine was designated to ensure uh, that the administrative power does not violate or take advantage of the legal powers. In addition, if any legislation or statute, including one of the constitution, uh, contradicts the fundamental features and structure of the constitution, the judiciary has in, uh, inherent authority through judicial re uh, review to strike down that legislation or statute as unconstitutional under Article 4. The powers of the judiciary to chart and balance the executive and legislature body can be illustrated in the case of Artel against Government of Malaysia 1976. In this case, it was regarding the issues of application of the doctrine of parliamentary supremacy that does not apply in Malaysia and that the legislative bodies do not have absolute power to make any laws that they want. 
So in this case, the applicant was accused of conducting armed gang robbery in violation of uh, Section 392 and 397 of the Penal Code. An offence punished under Section 5 of the Firearms Act of 1971 as modified. It was asserted that the Firearms Act of 1974 was ultra-virus with the federal constitution because it violated Article 8, Clause 1 and was thus null and void. The judge presiding in this case, Dun Sofian LP, stated that the doctrine of the supremacy of parliament does not apply in Malaysia. Here we have a written constitution. The power of parliament and of state legislatures in Malaysia is limited by the constitution and they cannot make any law they please. Now let's move on to the next case. To illustrate the judicial powers is the case of public prosecutor against Dato Yap Peng 1987. In this case, the defendant was charged in the Sessions Court in Kuala Lumpur on two criminal breach of trust allegations. When his case was discussed again before the Sessions Court, the Deputy Public Prosecutor presented a certificate from the Public Prosecutor under Section 418A of the Criminal uh, Procedure Code uh, requiring the case to be shifted to the High Court, which was swiftly complied with. The respondent was then formally arraigned in the High Court at Kuala Lumpur after an objection was taken on his behalf to the transfer of the case from the Sessions Court on the basis that it violates Article 121, Clause 1 and uh, Article 5, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. So in the Federal Court, it was held that the Section uh, 418A of the Criminal Procedure Code is unconstitutional and void as being an infringement of the provisions of Article 121, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. The last case that I will be presenting on my part is the case of Semeni Jaya Sendiam Berhad against Petabi Tanah Daira Udulangan and another 2017. So in this case, it explains uh, the functions of the judiciary. So in this case, the federal court has shown beyond a reasonable doubt that Article 121 Clause 1 vests judicial authority entirely in the higher courts. The constitution recognizes the separation of powers and judicial independence as fundamental aspects. The inherent judicial authority of the civil courts under Article 121, Clause 1 is closely linked to its constitutional duty as a system of check and balances. So in this case, the federal court struck, uh, struck down Section 40D of the Land Acquisition Act of 1960 on the grounds that it exceeded the power granted by the federal constitution. And both appeals challenged the validity of certain act sections, notably Section 40D. Furthermore, in discussing the issue of judicial review under Article 1 to 8, falls in a few different cases that can be used as illustration. The infamous case of Indira Gandhi Muto against Pengarah Jabatan Agama Islam Perak and others and other appeals 2018 should be discussed whenever a topic is regarding judicial review. So the issue is whether the High Court had the jurisdiction under Section 23, Section 24 and 25 of the Courts of Judicature Act 1964 being read together with Order 53 of the Rules of Court 2012 to review the registrar's action. The Federal Court held that the High Court shall have jurisdiction to review the executive's decision of the administration, as opposed to the Sharia Court based on Section 25 of the Schedule of the Courts of Judicature Act 1964 and Order 53 of the Rules of Court 2012. This case proves the significance of judicial review and the appropriate court to have, appropriate court to have jurisdiction in those matters. In regards of inconsistency with federal and state level, the case that can be used is the case of Iki Putra Mubarak against Kerajaan Negeri Selangor and another 2021. Whereby the issue arose when the petitioner challenged the authority of the Selangor State Legislature to enact Section 28 of the Sharia Criminal Offences Selangor Enactment 1995, which the petitioner then requested leave under Article 4, Subsection 3 and Article 4, Subsection 4. The Federal Court held that the paramount consideration of legislating criminal law offences should be within the powers of Parliament. The relevant rule is being placed under Article 74 and 9 Schedule of the Federal Constitution. Adding on, it can also be seen in Article 76, Subsection 2 and Article 76, Subsection 1, Paragraph 8, which explains the power of Parliament to legislate for states in certain cases. Therefore, the Court held that the provision of Section 28 of the Sharia Criminal Offences Lago Enactment 1995 would be declared as null and void. These two cases illustrate the power and significance of judicial review in maintaining a proper constitution mechanism which upholds the rule of check and balance. Hence, by applying this principle, the laws that have been made by parliament are not superior, which means that by applying the proper procedures, anyone that has the local standard and sufficient interest in the provision that has been made 
referring to public law or the combination of private law and public law could make proper application stated earlier. So what can we conclude from this presentation is that check and balance within the three branches of government is very needed to ensure that the, the separation of powers are constantly intact and this can be done through judicial review. And the, judici the judiciary's role is to uh, review the essence of validity of Malaysian legislation enacted by the legislative body and also at the same time uh, step in when the executive body is found to have abused their authority. And to compare the grounds of judicial review between the UK and Malaysia, UK, uh, gr UK grounds of judicial review is uh, on Ill illegality, irrationality and procedural ir irregularity, while Malaysia um, judicial, grounds of judicial review can only be set whenever there's um, when public art authority behave ultra-virus uh, and if they issue a uh, judgment that is contrary to the law. Judicial review is actually also important to cater to those uh, affected by a decision made by the court, uh, regardless of whether their personal circumstances were impacted by the judgment. And uh, lastly, the court may declare a parliamentary act or a subsidiary legislation to be illegal through this judicial review. So uh, I guess that's all from us. Thank you.